Hi, welcome to this podcast with Fujitsu. My name's Graham Bromham and I'm delighted to be joined today by Fernando Caterino. We're going to today talk about the ecosystem. Welcome. Thank you, Graham. It's a real pleasure to be here with you today and uh, be talking with such a topic which is so close to our hearts. Absolutely, absolutely. I think a really good place for us to start would be probably explaining to people how we've come from a traditional sort of linear partner model into an ecosystem approach. How how have we got here? That's a really interesting question because, you know, a lot of partners have started with the traditional linear model. And all of us have started, you know, if we look back years ago, that's how the, the normal collaboration between vendor distributor partner has started very yeah. linear. Now, with the skill shortages, which we have seen a while ago, starting a few years ago, we, we have seen that all the partners will not have all the skills at home. It's, it's, it's not possible for them to invest such amounts of money in having all the skills they need. And this means, of course, that they need to specialize. In specializing, they will become superstars with superpowers in certain areas of the business. And this, of course, means that they will need, in order to tap other business opportunities, they will need to have this collaboration with other partners. And this means working in an ecosystem approach. So it means that partners will need to collaborate with other partners. And yeah, th this is how it started. I would say that the biggest trigger point for abandoning the traditional linear model into becoming a more ecosystem wary and, and approach will be exactly yeah. working with other partners. And uh, yeah, and I, I, I totally get that. I, mean, I think I was I was going to ask you and you've half answered it, I think, which is, you know, everyone's talking about ecosystem. We've heard it at events that we've attended, you know, together, you know, it's been ecosystem or AI has been on the topic for the last, you know, 12, 18 months, etc. But what does ecosystem really mean? Ecosystem means partners working together. And we as a vendor, we have the responsibility or the role that we take is the orchestrator. So we are the ones who bring different partners together. In order to enable us to do that, we were the first coming into the market with an ecosystem platform, which enables partners to collaborate between themselves, but also brings or gives the opportunity to customers to also go into the platform and try to find the right superpowers of our partners for certain projects. For example, if we are talking about AI, not everyone will have the data scientists in their own house because sure. firstly, they are expensive. And secondly, there is not many in the market and everyone is trying to grab them. So what do we do? We bring partners with this skill set, with this expertise that have data scientists that will enable then other partners to get access to these superpowers. And these other partners will have superpowers in other areas like security, like data management, like backup and recovery. There is so many areas where partners can differentiate themselves. So this is working in an ecosystem. Yeah, I think I think your your AI example is probably you know, probably really really a yeah, really good example because you have, like you say, you've got the data scientists, and I guess one of our partners or a customer may have a data scientist, even if they, if they, even if mm -hmm. they've got to that point. But if you're putting an AI project together, what do you do with the the put? Who's going to design the interface? Yeah. Who's going to put the back end systems together? Who's going to understand the business processes, etc.? And you could get into an AI project and some part of digital transformation. And I think a lot of our partners are seeing that digital transformation piece and are very trusted by their customers mm -hmm. and are being asked more and more to provide an end-to-end an -end solution 
that's crossing skills areas that they just don't have in-house, but they need to be able to coordinate and deliver full accountability to a customer and find access to those trusted resources. So I guess that's where the ecosystem is. Absolutely, because, you know, customers are more and more looking into business outcomes. And the more partners can know about their customers' businesses and bring together a solution that can fulfill those uh, challenges and deliver business outcomes for the, par the, the customer, those are the ones who are going to strive. And those are the ones who have a bright future ahead of us. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the things to consider and to explain to people as well then is when you start to work in an ecosystem, it sounds like it's more working collaboratively mm -hmm. with trusted experts right. who can add value to your business. Yeah. But I can see that some of that doesn't necessarily add up to value for everybody on day one. You're investing time and effort in things where there isn't necessarily an immediate payback. How does that work for people? In everything in business, it's a give and take. And of course, you may not immediately see the revenue coming through, which actually you should see some, some of it, so parts of it, because the partner, uh, partner A will buy certain services or skills of human resources, you know, whatever that is from you. So partner B will have some profit but in the long run, this will transform in real business coming through because you will be known in the market as a partner that has the openness to collaborate and to work collaboratively with other partners. And that will help you to differentiate between amongst the, the, the others. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I, guess, I guess if even if it doesn't add up to immediate value, what it does do is adds capability to you yeah. as an organization and i know from from my own experience if you if we're talking with some of our more i guess traditional value-added resellers and partners their businesses are transforming massively towards cloud and digital transformation but what they are looking to do is to take services that help them provide data center hosting or address an AI requirement or a data consulting and data consolidation project, all of which certainly in the early times, they may not have those partners. So an ecosystem approach and partnership and collaboration really helps them be able to prove that they've got those capabilities without having to make massive upfront investments. And also it will enable them to keep their face towards the customer, you know, yeah. and to get the trust from the customer that they can deliver even if they work with two, three, four, five other partners to be able to deliver that solution. And uh, actually, uh, some analysts even say that, you know, customers are open to, to work and the, the, the intervenience within one deal will become seven. So this really is a, a, an example of how dynamic the market is, is at the moment how fast changing it is and how the digital transformation is enabling us, our partners, our distributors to really add value into the chain by working and collaborating together, doing the co-selling rather than the traditional approach that we had in the past. Great, great. That's really logical. So I guess you can see the real value there, but from a Fujitsu perspective, what's next? for ecosystem? So what we are looking now, Graham, is to really differentiate and look at innovation partners, which are partners that bring innovative solutions or aspects into building a solution. And here we are not talking about the strategic alliance partners, which typically bring that added value and that differentiation, but we are talking about channel partners that bring innovation. And we have a, a raft of examples where partners are bringing those innovative areas solutions to add value into our own solutions, whether that being in services, whether that being in security areas, 
in data management, data analytics, AI. So there is, and the future will be looking at the superpowers, which I already mentioned, but also into innovation partners, the ones that bring something new to add value into our, our own uh, solutions to build business outcomes for our joint customers. This yeah. is going to be the future, and the future will be all about cold selling. It's not about the traditional linear approach. It's going to be about working in an ecosystem where different types of partners come together and really add value from consultancies to ISVs to service providers to distributors, even traditional channel partners, yeah. because they hold the relationships. And they will bring them together, the other ones who can complement them. So the future is going to be innovation. Innovation. Great. I mean, that's that's really clear about the, uh, I guess, the value and the power of the ecosystem. And so have you got a closing message for the, any of those innovation partners who might be out there? Absolutely. If you are an innovation partner, please come and talk to us. Reach out to your account manager in country, your RSM. Make sure that you come with your distinctive superpowers. We are looking for superpowers all across Europe, so reach out to us. Thank you, Fernanda. That's, uh, that's great, and thanks for joining. And thank you all for joining as well. That's been great to understand the value of the ecosystem, and uh, stay tuned for future episodes where we'll be talking about Fujitsu pay-per-use in Uscal and also on the topics of AI. Speak to you soon. Thank you.